So in class today, January 27th, we left off talking about long-term construction contracts. I mentioned in class that there's two methods of accounting for long-term construction contracts, the percentage of completion method and the completed contract method. The percentage of completion method is the default gap method. The completed contract method is used only if you are unable to implement the percentage of co uh, completion method or if your contract is less, spans less than say uh, approximately a 12 month period of time. In other words, uh, for short term contracts, completed contract method is acceptable, but for longer term contracts, percentage of completion is required. So in class, we went through brief exercise 18 7. I'm going to run through it again real quickly in order to set the stage for the one that we didn't work, which is brief exercise. 18.9. 18.9 deals with completed contract. 18.7 deals with percentage of completion. So based on the facts of the problem in class, uh, we, um, we determined that these three journal entries would be made to record the incurring of the construction cost over the course of the year, the billings that we sent to customers on accounts, in the collection of cash from our customers. <coughs> These three entries really there's there's nothing new there. Uh, you should have encountered some uh, transactions similar to that uh, to these in, in in prior problems that you've seen in, in earlier classes. Um, what's new here is entry number four which is the entry that is made in order to implement the percentage of completion method. So to come up with this entry number four, which is where we book profit under, under the percentage of completion method, uh, the first thing we've got to do is to determine the percentage of the job that we're done with. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take, um, we're first going to estimate our total cost start to finish on, com on on the job. Well, we've incurred $1.7 million of cost so far. We, Our engineers tell us it's going to take another $3.3 million to finish the job. So our best guess is it's going to take us $5 million in cost to, to complete the job start to finish. Well, if we've incurred $1.7 million worth of cost to date, and we have and we estimate that it's going to take us five million job uh, dollars start to finish on the job to, f to complete the job then it looks like based on cost incurred to date we're 34 percent done with the job that 34 percent is calculated by taking cumulative cost to date and dividing it by total estimated job cost after we determine the percentage of the job that that we finished we multiply that times the contract value. The contract value here is a seven million dollar contract, and the result of that calculation, seven million times thirty-four percent, gives us the cumulative revenues that we've earned to date. If the job's worth seven million and we've completed thirty-four percent of the job, then we've earned two million three hundred eighty thousand dollars worth of revenues. That's that's what our logic is leading us to. From the cumulative revenues that we've earned to date, we subtract the cumulative revenues that we've previously reported on past income statements, which in this case is zero because this is the first year of the contract. So the revenues that we want to recognize this period are equal to $2,380,000. So at the end of the year, we're going to prepare an adjusting journal entry crediting revenue from long-term contract for that $2,380,000. We're going to match against those revenues the cost that we incurred this year on the job. The cost that we incurred this year on the job is this $1.7 million here. So that $1.7 million is going to go as a debit to cost of construction. This is an income statement account. Cost of construction is an income statement account. 
and the excess of, of the revenues over the cost of construction or six hundred and eighty thousand dollars is going to go as a debit to the construction and process account so update the construction and process account <coughs> over here Okay, so the balance in our construction and process account at the end of the year here is $2,380,000, which also is the cumulative revenues earned to date. So it is the case that the con construction and process account, the balance in that account, as reported on the company's balance sheet, is always going to equal to the cumulative revenues earned to date on the job. Finally, when we prepare our balance sheet, this construction process account and the billings account, those are going to be net, <laughs> netted together. And if there's an excess of CIP over billings, that's going to be reported uh, on the company's balance sheet under inventory. And if there's an excess of billings over CIP, that net balance is going to be reported <coughs> on the company's balance sheet under liabilities. So brief exercise 18-9 asks us to redo brief exercise 18-7 but prepare the solution on the completed contract method rather than the percentage of completion method. So this is essentially a, a copy of everything that you saw on the preceding solution for brief exercise 18-7. What I've done here though is to strike out journal entry number four, this fourth journal entry, because under completed contract there is no profit recognized on the job until we're done with the job. So journal entry number four would not be made in 2014. In other words, the solution for brief exercise 18-9 consists of all the journal entries 1, 2, and 3 that we did in brief exercise 18-7, but it excludes the fourth journal entry because we recognize no profit under completed contract method until the job is done.